Okay, hey YouTube. Um, so, <laughs> I have had the last, my last um, eye appointment before my surgery, which my surgery will be on January the 8th, as long as I can get, <laughs> as long as insurance will approve the cornea. Yeah, so that's a bit of the way off, but the doctor explained that kind of since we're only really looking to save light perception, that um, she feels like I could, um, I could have surgery, you know, it could be anywhere from three to six months post-detachment that, that surgery would become pointless. She did say there is a good chance that my retina will just detach again. <laughs> Um, she kind of compared my retina to soup. Um, kind of cool. But, uh, she, uh, you know, um, she kind of compared it to soup, and she said that, um, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll do your, we'll do the best, and we, uh, we're asking about, um, a tear. Because this whole time, we, you know, people have been saying there's a tear, we don't see it, there's a tear, well, she explained there's not really a tear. It's more like I have a little, um, pinhole. Pinhole is kind of in the structure of the retina. And so they have to go in and plug all that up. And she, the whole thing with the cornea comes in where she, um, thinks that she has a good enough view right now to where she can go in and fix it. Her concern is a lot like the other surgeon's concern in that she's, worried that once um she actually gets in there that that view is gonna close up and she said you know if the view closes up i've committed myself nobody can go in and do anything so she will not do it without a cornea on standby so insurance has not approved the cornea yet but they said that it looks like the cornea will be approved I don't really know exactly what that means. I don't know if once that's said, it's like a 90% done deal thing, or if it's a 51% sure thing. I'm not sure, but they seemed really confident by that. So that was, you know, good enough for me. So I won't know until um, I wake up, I guess, whether or not I have a, a, a new cornea, which is kind of weird. So the surgery, I'm going to be out, general anesthetic. The surgery is going to be um, roughly two hours if I don't need a cornea. If I do need a cornea, it could be four to six. So, it's a difference. Um, but I was just so happy that she agreed to put me under. I was like, yeah, do whatever you want. I'm like, you don't understand, doc. Last time, the first time I got a biopsy with with the other doctor, she's like trying to like stick the needle in my eye and I'm like, so is it in yet? <laughs> like, I'm not the person that you want to be under, um, not under general anesthetic when you're poking around in my eye. I'm just saying it, it, it would be bad. So that's pretty much all that's going on on the eye front. Um, as far as other exciting things, I have actually ordered seeds. Yay! Go me! It's doing something. Um, I ordered them from the Little Shop of Seeds guy on YouTube. So, we'll see. I can't remember right off the top of my head what I've ordered, but um, once I um, get them, I'll explain more about them and things like that. He had a really good deal. Um, his seeds are very reasonably priced. He gets them from wholesalers or he gets them out of his garden. But the thing is, is that you get them just in like a, a plain, um, kind of like package. You don't get, you know, you don't get them in a, in a fancy like seed thing, but that's fine. For the price, it's 55 uh, cents for X number of seeds. And depending on the seeds is how many you get. I've decided that predominantly I want to start with growing um, onions and garlic. And <laughs> I really want to grow the 1015Y sweet Texas onions is my goal. And for garlic, there's like a thousand different garlic varieties. Not all can grow even in America and even fewer can grow in um, Texas. You know, so it's not like I really have a thousand to choose from, 
but I have a shit ton to look into, man. And so the thing is with garlic, there are two different varieties. There's the soft neck and the hard neck variety. And the hard neck variety are what you would grow up more near northern areas. And since obviously I'm in Houston, um, I'm going to look into soft neck varieties. And it's not even like they're different varieties. It's more like they're different strain, strands. And the difference is in how they taste and what they're used for. And like there's garlic that's better for roasting or garlic that's better for eating raw. So um, I've now found myself in this very um i'd say interesting world of garlic other people would say very annoying world of garlic it, it depends on your your belief on garlic i guess um so that but that is really cool i'm i'm really looking forward to doing that also i'm looking into um allotments that i can rent you know i don't want to help out on a community garden i just want my little allotment. I just want my little garden. I just want to do what I want to do and, and then call it a day. You know, I don't mind volunteering to help out with community activities. I don't mind volunteering to, um, you know, to, to do things that are going to benefit like everybody collectively, their allotments. But I don't want to be told what to plant or where to plant or how to plant. I you know, I'm just not interested in that. So that's kind of proven to be a bit of a challenge because around this area, everything's more focused on community-based stuff. But um, but we'll see. I Eventually, I will find somewhere. I will find somebody that will let me plant my vegetables. I just don't know when or, or exactly where. But I, I do have faith, they are out there, and they do exist. Uh, let's see, outside of that, I am, I need to get on it. I'm going to do the Braille uh, thing through the Hatley um, Center, because I really do need to improve upon my Braille skills. You know, like honestly, they are abysmally bad. And... <laughs> I just think that there's times, especially um, with this whole gardening and, and things like that, where I'm going to need to get another bro note taker just so I can take decent notes. Carrying a laptop around just isn't always practical. And I do have I do have a tablet. It is old. Eventually, I will get another new tablet. Uh, again, I just... I think at this junction of my life, I really think I need to make a more, um, more of an effort to, to develop my brawl skills, especially because I am potentially looking at going back into law school. Well, going to law school, I've not been to law school before, <laughs> but, um, with the Latin and with the cases and in court, you know, again, I just think Brawl is going to be a more practical option. So that is, um, yeah, that is, as far as like blind, blind people skills, my O&M has always been pretty good. I mean, I've worked my butt off at it, but it's always been good. Um, my Brawl skills have never, but even, even as a print, um, a print person, my reading skills haven't been strong. I can listen to things at, you know, 695 words a minute. But, um, but reading is something that I'm going to have to work on. And I think it's probably about time I, I just kind of do that. So that's, that will be interesting. And if anybody is interested in that or, or getting involved with that or, or, um, any questions about Braille or anything, you know, of course, let me know. I'm not going to pretend to be the biggest Braille expert in the world, but I, you know, I'll help you out the best I possibly can. Um, I'm also planning on doing, you know, back to the whole gardening thing. I'm also planning on doing um, some videos about how to make homemade, um, 
watering wicker watering containers and so i mean that should hopefully be coming fairly soon i'm i need to find some food grade containers first and foremost before i can do anything and my whole goal is to keep these projects thing um keep these projects cheap and make sure that all of the tools are as accessible to everybody as they can possibly be. My other main goal is to attempt, um, you know, to explain how to do this, preferably without the need of any sighted people whatsoever. If there is something that I cannot figure out how to do, you know, I will definitely reach out to to others first but then I will try to come up with a solution that involves you know as little help as possible because otherwise well, you know what's really the point so that should be coming um as always if there is anything in particular as far as gardening or hopefully I'll eventually have somewhere where I can cook now I'm not a good cook I've never cooked really in my life. So I'm going to tell you that whenever I shoot myself cooking, um, it's going to go wrong sometimes. It just is. But eventually I will have somewhere where I can cook and where I can um, learn with you guys. You know, so there's any, anything simple like uh, harder than boiling water probably not as hard as like probably no more difficult than like making a stew because like I could make a stew throw, throw stuff in a pot yeah I mean I can do that but um oh I can do bread I can show all of you how to bake bread that is the one thing I can cook but um if there's anything that anybody wants to know about gardening or cooking especially from a blindness perspective obviously uh, get in contact. If you have any general blindness related questions, obviously let me know. Uh, that includes questions about, you know, guide dogs and things like that. Eventually I want to get a GoPro and I will show more about Epic and how he works and, and what he does. I'm also hoping to show some ways, um, some of the activities I do just for general enrichment for him. Some of you with dogs, guide dogs or pet dogs or whoever, might find some of that interesting you know so yeah if there's anything that anyone wants to know b-l-y-n-d-d-e-1 at gmail.com and uh thanks for watching